Hey guys, it's me again, Chicken Oobble. Shadow of the Mad King is back, and that means we can get back into the labyrinth to farm some trick-or-treat bags. When I command or farm with an efficient group, I get anywhere between 600 and 800 trick-or-treat bags per hour, and I've seen others claim higher totals than that. We can achieve these high bag per hour amounts because we understand that the squad working together, with the common goal of getting loads of loot in mind, pays greater rewards than everyone playing for themselves. In this video, I'll explain how an efficient labyrinth group operates, what type of builds and gear we take into battle, how we set up our accounts for looting, and some other points of etiquette. By adopting the philosophies in this video and then spreading this message to your squad mates, you too will increase your rewards. The Labyrinth is an instanced zone that is filled with basic Halloween-themed enemies to indiscriminately kill and farm for loot. An efficient group of players will form a squad and then quickly follow a commander around the map on a farming route, tagging every enemy they see. Tagging is the process of doing around 800 damage to an enemy to get credit for the kill and receive loot. And that's critically important to know, you shouldn't be going all out on your damage. Enemies die by getting tagged by everyone in the squad. If everyone goes all out on damage, fewer players get tags, and each player's chance for loot per kill drops significantly. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but a squad that does less damage individually will get more rewards overall. At various points around the map, the squad will encounter one of three types of doors, and the commander should be the only person to open the doors. There's two reasons for this. First, some of the doors, called faux doors, trigger events that spawn dozens of enemies. These events are affected by event upscaling. If more players are present, more enemies will spawn from the door, meaning you get far more opportunities to tag and get loot. The second reason for the commander to open the doors is not all doors should be opened by all squads. Some doors will spawn bosses and veterans. Although the bosses will give you buffs if you kill them, if the squad can't kill the boss fast enough, then wasting time on the boss will actually impact your bag per hour rate. If the commander chooses to skip the boss, but if someone opens the door anyways, now you have a legendary creature that'll nuke your squad with candy corn as you run past, slowing everyone down. Let the commander make the call as to whether or not doors should be opened. Taking the wrong profession and build into the labyrinth can greatly impact your performance. You should take professions that can quickly tag multiple enemies with little effort as you're running around and give AoE options for handling mobs as they emerge from Fodors. You should also consider mobility skills in case you fall behind the group and stun breaks because some enemies can crowd control your character. A core variation of a build that I farm the Labyrinth with is the Shortbow Thief. The Shortbow is a great option because the number one skill, Trickshot, will bounce between multiple targets increasing the number of tags per auto attack. Shortbow 4, Choking Gas, is great for Fodors, and Shortbow 5, Infiltrator Arrow, is useful for teleporting short distances if needed. Since the Thief is always dealing damage with its auto attack, I use Signet of Malice to steadily keep my health up, Signet of Agility for Condition Cleanse and Increase Critical Chance, Shadow Step and Haste to increase my mobility and break stuns, and Dagger Storm for Fodors. This is just an example of a core build so all viewers can join in the fun. And I'll put it and the specialization link in the comments below. Even if you don't have a thief, you can make one and join the labyrinth farm at a low level because of character upscaling. You get upscaled to level 80 in the labyrinth, so you can run around and earn experience while earning loot. I'll be adding additional builds in the comments section, and I ask that you guys post your favorite builds as well. Comment on others so other players can see what you think, and if you see a build in the comments that you think is actually pretty good, make sure you like that comment so other people know that you approve. Now there are lots of options for your builds. The one I normally prefer to use is something called the Tag Devil, which is a daredevil build meant for tagging lots of enemies quickly. I'll put a link to it down below or I'll put a write up in the comments. I recommend having two sets of gear for an efficient labyrinth farm. One low damage set of gear meant specifically for moving around the labyrinth, and a second set of high damage gear that you would use for end game content, like fractals or raids or something like that. The low damage gear can be easily and cheaply obtained through the trading post. My recommendation is to find some masterwork gear that isn't stacking power, precision, and ferocity. 
Masterwork gear has 20% lower stats than exotic gear, and it's significantly cheaper to obtain. I can get a full Masterwork set of Rampager's armor, a Rampager shortbow, and Soldier's trinkets for less than half a gold. If you find yourself lacking DPS to get tags, just pull one or two trinkets from your high damage set until you're good again. If you find yourself doing too much damage, then remove some trinkets from your character. For prefixes, I would probably stay away from Berserkers, Demolishers, Marauder, Destroyer, Diviners, Grieving, and Assassins, since they all have power, precision, and ferocity, and that would likely pump a lot of damage very easily. Be careful with prefixes that substitute power, precision, or ferocity with condition damage. I guess I'm saying be careful with the 100% offensive builds and prefixes on all your gear. Mix and match to find that sweet spot. I'll put a link to the wiki page that shows you the offensive and defensive distribution of each prefix so you can see which prefixes are more or less offensive. With two sets of gear, you can use your low damage set while you're roaming around with the squad, and switch to your high output set if your commander chooses to take on a boss. Just wait a few seconds before you engage the boss so you can be out of combat to swap equipment sets. Speed and mobility are important. If you're at the back of the squad as it moves around the map, you might get fewer tags. For this reason, most Labyrinth farming builds use the Superior Sigil of Speed, which gives 20 seconds of swiftness whenever an enemy is killed, and the Superior Sigil of Fire, which triggers a blast on critical hit that could tag additional enemies. To improve the effect of swiftness, many people use the Superior Runes of Speed, which increases movement speed from 33% to 66% under the effect of swiftness. If your build takes advantage of super speed, you probably don't need superior runes of speed. The best thing for looting is to have the packed commander mastery line fully mastered so you get access to auto looting. Every kill, whether you're right next to it or not, will deposit loot right into your bag without pressing F. If you're new or on a free-to-play account, you won't have this unlocked, so to help your looting, you'll want to make sure these two options are checked in the options menu. AoE loot on interact and auto loot quick interact will bypass the loot window and loot every creature within 900 units of the player when you press F, allowing you to loot more quickly. You just have to get near your kills and press F all the time. If your account magic find is high enough, you can get more than one bag per kill. By using various boosters and effects, you can push your magic find as high as possible. I put a table on screen that shows the effect icon and name, percentage increase, whether the effect stacks, the source item that provides the effect, and where to get that item. Pause the video and take notes, or click the link in the description to open up that spreadsheet. Once you have all the boosters you can get your hands on, use them and farm as hard as you can while they're active. Effects will only tick down while you're logged in, so log out if you need to take an extended break. If you're looking to maximize your farming run, you need to find people with a similar objective. Use your looking for group window by pressing Y and then going to the second tab. You'll find groups advertised in two different places, either the Central Tyria Squads tab or the Festival Squads tab. Look for squads that advertise high bags per hour, have stipulations like no mount attacks, or words like fast. Avoid groups that have terms like casual or chill since you're looking for the tryhard squads. You can see who is commanding the squad by mousing over this commander icon. Maps have a 25 player cap, and it's possible that you join a squad that's running in a full map. You'll know that your map is full because you'll see all the pictures in the corner, they'll be grayed out. Just right click one of the blacked out squad members and keep selecting the join in Mad King Labyrinth option until you get in. Mount attacks do an insane amount of damage to any of the basic enemies. Avoid using mount attacks with the group if they're running around or fighting at a foe door. Use mounts for the races or to catch up with the group, but use the dismount button instead of the attack button. The only exception for mount attacks would be if you're attacking a boss. If you're in an efficient farming group, then the commander probably has a good idea what they're doing. Follow them. Let the commander choose the route, which doors to open and when, 
when to take a break, and when to do the mount races. If the commander asks you to slow DPS, then do that, remove some of your trinkets. If the commander asks you to wait for a door or for the tail of the squad to catch up, then wait. Stay with the group, listen to the commander, and reap the rewards. Oh, and please, don't try to command a second squad when there's already a commander on the map. That defeats the whole operation. If you're interested in commanding a squad, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell because I'm also working on a video that gives tips for effectively commanding a labyrinth squad. When to fight bosses, how to use markers, what I think the most efficient route rotation is, and some more things. Anyways guys, I hope this helps you get more out of the labyrinth farm. Share this video with rogue players that need guidance. If you see them off doing their own thing, send them a whisper, tell them to find this video. If you're on NA and want to join me in the labyrinth sometimes, you can probably find me running in the late evenings from 8.30pm to 1.30am Eastern Standard Time, or during the daytime hours on the weekend. Thanks for watching everybody, until next time, be safe, be kind to each other, and I'll see you farming in the labyrinth.